The sermon text for this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever wondered how a bonsai tree is trained? Besides proper watering and lighting and fertilizing, a bonsai tree needs regular pruning. Now, there are two types of pruning in the bonsai process, maintenance pruning and style pruning. Maintenance pruning maintains the shape of the tree by encouraging the plant to grow more shoots and ensures that the tree does not overgrow. Style pruning is aesthetic enhancing, giving the tree form and showing its beauty. Now there are many points to consider in the bonsai pruning process. One must be careful not to cut too many shoots in one pruning because the plant may not be able to recover. The shoots should be cut with a delicate hand and it must be smoothed after each cut, each cut. And every cut must be on an angle. You see, every cut creates a bruise, which then must be covered with cut paste to prevent excessive loss of sap. One also should not cut random bits from the tree, as a tree will slowly die if every new branch it grows, is cut off. And most important, pruning must be done with care as a tree can permanently be damaged if the wrong branches are cut. Today's gospel reading talks about pruning. Jesus begins, I am the vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Bruce Wilkerson, author of the book Secrets of the Vine, says this about vine growing. Vineyards 
have been a symbol of God's generous provisions for Israel for over 2,000 years. The disciples knew grapes, like the Brits know tea. They understood that in order to get more fruit from a grapevine, you had to go against the plant's natural tendency. Left to itself, a grape plant will always favor new growth over more grapes. The result? From a distance, one sees luxurious growth, but up close, and one realizes an underwhelming harvest of grapes. That's why the vine grower cuts away unnecessary shoots. A vineyard's only purpose is to grow grapes. In fact, pruning is a grower's single and most important technique for ensuring a plentiful harvest. Jesus calls himself the vine and says we are the branches. When Jesus talks about pruning us, he recognizes that it is a systematic process. Like the artists of a bonsai tree and the vine grower in the vineyard, God removes all the pieces of our lives that don't produce fruit and trims and prunes the healthy aspects to force new growth. This type of pruning allows for more spiritual fruit from God's people. As Christians, our purpose is to grow in the likeness of Jesus Christ. That means having a daily relationship with Jesus, learning about him, praying with him, listening to him. It means taking time to understand his ways so the ways that so that his ways become our ways. It means we need to make time to be with our Lord. But our lives are busy. We are a professional, multitasking society. We have more responsibilities and projects and demands than ever. Our hectic schedules easily draw us away from God's call on our lives. Busyness fills our days and keeps us from doing ministry for God. This is where pruning comes into the picture. Jesus wants to free us from some of the burdens of life. Friends, when we focus on Jesus and ask for help in walking in his footsteps, we are asking for pruning. For without pruning, we may be living only a fraction of our potential Christian life. Jesus knows those areas of our lives that zap our energy and steal our time. He knows what we need, and he knows what unnecessarily burdens us. Jesus gives us individual attention and prunes us perfectly for his plan. Now, across the country, grade schools, high schools, and colleges will soon be holding their graduation ceremonies. For the graduates, this is often bittersweet. What makes it a time of mixed emotions is not the accomplishment of finishing school and heading off to new ventures. Emotions heighten when students recognize that soon many of their friends will be going separate ways. Some of those final conversations that classmates will have with each other or will put in each other's yearbook is the desire to stay in touch, to stay connected. It makes sense because we know that if friendships are going to last or grow stronger or develop more deeply, people have to stay connected with each other. Jesus Christ wants to be the best friend of every person in the world. As Christians, we know this, but like any friendship, our relationship with Jesus has to be cultivated. When it is, great blessings follow. When it is not, like friendships, the connection, the joy of knowing that he is genuinely interested and involved in our lives can grow distant and even be lost 
completely. This is the message for today. Jesus provides us with an illustration of the importance and blessing of staying connected. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches that grow from his vine. And just like a real branch cannot live without the vine, without Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. But with him, we can do all things. We, the branches, are alive because of Jesus, the vine. When we are attached to him, we are nourished. We grow. And as we grow, we need pruning to keep us healthy and focused and nurtured. You see, when our faith is healthy, when, our, when we are focused on Jesus Christ, and when we are nurtured by the Holy Spirit, we bear fruit. Fruit that will make a difference in God's kingdom. Friends, each of us has areas in our lives that need to be changed, and God will find ways to make the changes. But it's up to us to desire and to decide how we will accept God's pruning. Will we allow the pruning from God to have purpose in our lives? Or will we let the pruning go to waste? Bruce Wilkinson says this about our pruning. It's how we respond to God's pruning that makes all the difference. We can complain, rebel, com compromise, or run away. Or we can experience the joy, comfort, and rest that comes to believers who keep their eyes on Jesus rather than focusing on the discomfort and even the pain of pruning. When we look to Jesus, our lives will be fruitful and meaningful. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Remember the beautiful outcome of a pruned bonsai tree. Remember the abundant harvest of a well-pruned vineyard. Jesus prunes us so we bear fruit, fruit for God and God's kingdom. Sisters and brothers, our pruning may be difficult and may even be painful at times, but the reward is worth it. Yes, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. Live with Jesus and live for Jesus. Jesus wants our lives to bear the fruit of God's spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That, dear friends, is what it means to be pruned. Be ready. Be ready to be pruned by Jesus and to live a fruitful life for God's kingdom. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, so many times when things get tough, when we have to make changes, we complain and wonder why. Remind us again and again and again that you prune us for your glory and that as we are pruned, we become more and more beautiful in your eyes for we are filled with your spirit and we give forth your fruit. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now together, using the word